Simplifying fractions. How do you go from two-fourths to one-half? How is it that you go from ten-twentieths to one-half? Uh, they're equivalent fractions. What that means is if you were to divide two into one, you get 0 0.5. And if you were to divide 20 into 10, you'd get 0 0.5. So they're the same amount of stuff. But how do you simplify this to this? How do you simplify 50 one-hundredths to be one-half, the equivalent fraction? Well, let's take a look at 7 over 21. It's simplified to 1 third, but how did we do that? Well, if we factor, in other words, we take a look at what numbers, what are the smallest numbers that we can get to multiply to be 7. In this case, it would be 1 times 7. And if we look to see what are the smallest numbers that we could get to multiply to be 21, that would be 3 times 7. Well, now what we have is we have a 7 in the numerator, and we have a 7 in the denominator as a factor, and they cancel each other out. They don't become 0, they just become the number 1. So now we have 1 times 1 is 1, and we have 3 times 1 is 3. So 1 third is an equivalent fraction to 7 over 21. We'll take a look at another example. All right, we'll take a look here. We have 6 eighteenths, and the equivalent fraction of 6 eighteenths is 1 third, but how did we get there? Well, in this case, we could multiply uh, 1 times 6 and 3 times 6. 1 times 6 is 6, and 3 times 6 is 18. That gives us a 6 in the numerator, and that gives us a 6 in the denominator, and they cancel each other out, and that leaves us with 1 third left over. So 1 third and 6 eighteenths are equivalent fractions. All right, we'll take a look at another example. Here we have uh, 11 30 thirds. 11 30 thirds is also a way of writing 1 third, and we can do that by multiplying 1 times 11 and 3 times 11. That then gives us an 11 in the numerator and an 11 in the denominator. Just becomes the number 1, just becomes the number 1, and so 1 times 1 is 1, and 3 times 1 is 3. So 11 30 thirds and 1 third are equivalent fractions. That is, they're the same amount of stuff. They live at the same place on the number line. Okay, now what we're going to do is you can see the fraction and you can see the stop sign. So you're going to click on the stop sign, try to solve the problem. When you think you have it worked out, click on the go sign and then you can see how you did. So click on the stop sign. All right, let's see how you did. Okay, 4 over 32, 4 30 seconds. We can multiply 1 times 4, that gives us 4, and 8 times 4, that gives us 32. The 4's cancel each other out, becoming the number 1, becoming the number 1, and so 1 times 1 is 1, and 8 times 1 is 8. So 4 30 seconds and 1 eighth are the same amount of stuff, and they both live right here on the number line, the same place. All right, click on the stop sign. Give it a whirl. All right, let's see how you did. You have uh, 9 27 Well, 9 can be factored as 3 times 3, and 27 can be factored as 3 times 3 times 3. Now, this 3 cancels with that 3, and this 3, it could cancel with this 3. It could cancel with that one, but it doesn't really matter. And so now you see perhaps why it becomes very important that this doesn't become 0, or just go away, it becomes a number 1. Because 1 times 1 is 1, and we just have a 3 left over. So that becomes 1 third. If these went away, then we would have 0 or nothing over 3, and that wouldn't work. So uh, 1 third and 9 27 live at the same place on the number line. And if we had a number line here with a 0, and a 1, then we have, oh, 1 third would be about right here somewhere, and we have that, so they would both live at the same place on the number line. All right, press on the stop sign and see how you do. Okay, let's see how you did. Well, uh, 11 uh, 50 fifths uh, can be factored as 1 times 11, and 5 times 11. The 11's cancel each other out, becoming the number 1. So 1 times 1 is 1, and 5 times 1 is 5. Okay, let's see how you did. Uh, we can factor 6 
has 2 times 3, and we can factor 32 a number of ways, but we could factor it as just uh, 2 times 16, and this 2 cancels with that 2, and that leaves us with 3 16 left over, and so 3 16 and 6 seconds are equivalent fractions, and you would find them at the same place on the number line. If we did the long division here, in other words, uh, we divided 32 into 6, and we divided 16 into 3, we get the same decimal number. Okay, give it a whirl. Well, let's see how you did. 4 can be factored as 1 times 4, and it can also be factored as 2 times 2, uh, and 16 can be factored as 4 times 4, so uh, this 4 cancels with that 4, and that leaves us with 1 fourth left over, and so 4 sixteenths and 1 fourth are at the same place on the number line. If you did the long division here, you'd get 0 0.25 for both of them. So they both would turn into 0 0.25. All right, 3 over 66. Press on the stop sign. We'll see how you did. And we have 3 can be factored as 3 times 1. And 66 can be factored as 22 times 3. And so this 3 cancels with that 3 and just becomes the number 1, becomes the number 1. 1 times 1 is 1. And 22 times 1 is 22. So 1 over 22 is the same thing, the same amount of stuff as uh, 3 over 66. All right. Click on the stop sign and give it a whirl. Okay, we'll see how you did. Well, we have 36 sixty fourths. 36 can be factored as 2 times 2 times 9. And 64 can be factored as 2 times 2 times 16. And then we have this 2 canceling that 2, and this 2 canceling with that 2, and that leaves us with 9 sixteenths left over. And so we have 9 sixteenths is equivalent to. 36 over 60 fourths. All right, click on the stop sign, give it a whirl. Well, you can take a look at this. One of the things that I would do is look at this and say, all right, well, this is an even number, this is an even number, so I certainly know I can divide it by 2. So 2 times 16 uh, and 2 times 30. That will give us 32 over 60. This 2 cancels with that 2. And I look at it and I say, oh, all right. Uh, 16 is an even number and 30 is an even number. So I can multiply that as 2 times 8 and 2 times 15. This 2 cancels with that 2 and leaves me with 8 fifteenths. Can't simplify 8, 8 fifteenths anymore. So 8 fifteenths and 32 sixtieths, uh, if you looked at them in a decimal capacity, would be 0 0.5333 and 3 would go on forever and ever and ever. Amen. So uh, this is a perfect way of writing the number, and this is a decimal representation. All right, give it a whirl. Press on the stop sign. Well, 6 can be factored as 2 times 3, and 64 can be factored as 2 times 32. That means this 2 cancels with that 2, and we wind up with 3 over 32. And if you wanted to know what that was in a decimal, it would be this. So both numbers would uh, give us this product if we were to come in and do the long division of both of these fractions. All right, click on the stop sign. Well, it turns out that we can't factor 3 anymore, and so we're pretty stuck there. 640 can be factored, but kind of be a waste of our time. So this is as simple as it gets. 44 over 64. Click on the stop sign. All right, let's see how you did. Well, it turns out 44 can be factored as 2 times 22, and 64 can be factored as 2 times 32. So we can cancel this one with this one, this 2 with this 2, and then now we have an even number and an even number. Well, it turns out 22 can be factored as 2 times 11, and 32 can be factored as 2 times 16. This 2 cancels with that 2, leaves us with 11 sixteenths. So 11 sixteenths, if we did the long division, would give us this decimal equivalent, or 44 over 64, if we did the long division, would give us this decimal equivalent, 2. All right, 30, 13 thirty-ninths. Click on the stop sign, give it a whirl. All right, let's see how you did. 
Uh, turns out 13 can be factored as 1 times 3, and 39 can be factored as 3 times 13. This 13 cancels with that 13, leaves us uh, with 1 third. If we did the long division, we would get this as our decimal equivalent, and doesn't matter if we did it with 1 third or if we did it with 13 39ths. All right, give it a whirl. Well, turns out 22 can be factored as 2 times 11, and 77 can be factored as 7 times 11. This 11 cancels with that 11, leaves us with 2 sevenths left over. These are equivalent fractions right here, and if we did the long division on them, we would get this decimal answer. If we did the long division on this, we would get that decimal answer, which is the same decimal answer residing the same place on the number line. All right, your comments and suggestions are welcome and encouraged. You may write to me at alanmorris at yahoo.com.